The National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, on Wednesday reached an agreement with the federal government over its ongoing strike. At a meeting which lasted almost the entire day, the association said it will consult its executive council within the next 24 hours with a view to calling off the strike by Thursday. Both parties have been locked in negotiations to resolve issues that led to the declaration of a nationwide strike on Monday. Some of the issues revolved around the provisions of group life insurance for doctors and other healthcare workers, payment of death in service, benefits to next of kin beneficiaries, universal implementation of the Medical Residency Training Act in all federal and state, immediate review of the hazard allowance of healthcare workers, and payment of COVID-19 inducement allowance. But the federal government noted that the eight of the demands uh, made by NAD had been addressed and the remaining two were in different stages of being resolved. And we're now being joined by Dr. Julian Ojebo, first vice president of NAD. Thank you very much for joining us this morning all the way from Abuja. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. According to the government, uh, the agreement has been reached and the strike is likely to be called off today. Is, is that true? That is not true. Um, we had um, about seven hour long discussions yesterday where we had um, members of the government ranging from the Honorable Minister for Labor, His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Dr. Chris Ngege, also present was um, the Honorable Minister for States um, for Labor, Comrade um, Festus Kiamo S.A.N. Also present was the Honorable Minister for State Health, um, Distinguished Senator Adeleke Mamora. We also had, um, we also did have um, the luxury of um, having the presence of the Accountant General of the Federation and various um, directors of the department um, from Health and from Labor. Um, during the meeting, we had very exhaustive discussions and we did reiterate our demands to um, the other side of the government, making them understand that all these demands by the NARD, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, are legitimate demands and they've actually been ranging for quite a number of time now. We also do have on our um, list of demands the non-implementation of the Medical Residency Training Act, the domestication and the implementation by the state tertiary health institutions, which they have failed um, to do. And so um, following these um, discussions, the government did say on their own part what they have done, but we also did make them understand that the, um, the calling off or the suspension of any industrial action does not lie on the table of the National Officers Committee but that the National Executive Council is saddled by the constitution of the association with that responsibility. And as such, no one can say that we have called off the strike. We're only telling them that we are taking their, um, what they brought to the table to the National Executive um, um, Council to dissect and look in-depthly if they are satisfied with these demands. And as such, we shall be um, letting the government know the, um, the decision that have been reached by the National Executive Council. So, saying that as a premise or as a start, we have not yet called off our industrial action. Our industrial action still subsists. And um, when we have a meeting with the National Executive Council, we will now make no uh, stand, as it were, to the government that um, decision of the National Executive Council. Hmm. Now, could you kindly run us through the agreements reached and those yet to be reached? Yeah, for starters, again, um, the government always um, come with some level of, I'd say, lip services to some of these demands. We did say that um, we decried the deplorable state of um, the health tertiary institutions, both at the federal and the state levels. We did say that there were non-provisions of personal protective gears. Um, government did say that they have released um, some, which we also have seen, but we are trying to make them understand that these um, personal protective equipment are actually um, disposable materials that are used over time. Okay, so um, the, the issues of um, some countries not being able to provide them when they want to buy should, shouldn't arise because these things are disposable and they can actually source for them so that our members 
all over the um, country, both at the federal and the state tertiary health institutions and um, other um, ancillary um, um, hospitals can also, also have these provisions at their disposal when they need them. We also did decry the, um, um, the non-payment of debt and service benefits to our members. Government did say that they have, um, through the office of the um, head of service of the Federation, they have provided the, uh, um, the wherewithal to um, make sure that um, these people are captured and that their monies are actually paid to them. But we're making them understand that, yes, you have um, released the money. We don't care whether um, 20 trillion naira has been released. What we are trying to tell the government that what you have released has not gotten to the beneficiaries, to the next of kin of our beloved members that have passed on while trying to serve um, their country and their motherland, being patriotic to their motherland. What we're saying is that it has not gotten to, um, to the beneficiaries of these people. That is what we are saying. They say they have released monies um, for all civil servants, but we're saying that our members that have died from um, COVID and other um, infectious diseases like glass of fever, they have not gotten their um, debt and service benefit. They did also say that um, uh, um, the, uh, what's it called now, the uh, group life insurances have been done through the office of the um, head of civil service of the Federation. But we are saying that our members have not been enrolled into those um, uh, um, group life insurances for healthcare workers at this very time as we speak. That's what we are saying, that it has not been done. We did also did say, there is an act signed into law in 2017, graciously by the um, President, His Excellency, Muhammadu Buhari, in 2017. What we are saying now is this, you have not achieved or completed the implementation and the complete domestication of these, um, of these uh, uh, medical residency training acts. There are different components of this act. There's the component that has to do with the National Postgraduate College. There's another component that has to do with the funding. This is 2020 September. The component of funding for 2019 had not been paid. And there's no framework to that. The component of 2020, graciously, um, His Excellency, the Right Honorable um, Speaker of the um, Federal House of Representatives, has graciously, um, with, with, with the other members in the House, included the residency training funding in the revised budget. And now there is no cash back into that effect. So we are saying to the government, this, the, the legislative arm, they've done their own part. We need the executive arm to actually do their own part and actually fund cash back this um, um, funding with what has been um, outlined in the revised budget. All we still have at this very time are still promises. Hmm. We also say that the hazard inducement COVID that you promised to all healthcare workers voluntarily, you did say that you were going to um, uh, pay um, COVID inducement allowances to all healthcare workers all around the um, country. This is September. You've not even completed that for June. So these are the issues that we are having. And we're saying they are giving us promises that they have done them, but in reality, we have not seen them. So these are the issues that we have to take back to our members. Okay, of course, after every party, after every conciliatory meeting, there's going to be a memorandum of understanding, a memorandum of terms of settlement. This memorandum of terms of settlement, the onus doesn't just lie on us to say we have signed an agreement, the government should do its part. No, we're saying that you've signed an agreement, you've told us what you want to do, we, on our own part, are going to take it to our national executive body and make them know that these and these and these are what government has signed. However, do not forget so fast or so quickly that the government of today has, over time, signed various memorandums of understanding that they've reneged on. So these are the issues we're having at different um, levels. So this is where we are um, currently. Yeah, we do understand uh, your grievance, uh, uh, Mr. Ojibo, but the government is asking for patience, especially with the Ministry of Finance. Are you privy to the uh, bureaucratic bottlenecks associated with disbursement of funds from government, or do you think this is just uh, flimsy excuses? No, we are not. We, we are actually aware of various bureaucratic bottlenecks um, at different levels, different strata of government. But what we're saying that these bottlenecks should actually um, in the face of the um, services we provide, 
this bottleneck should actually be reduced to the barest minimum because we provide essential services. Okay, when we provide essential services, we expect you to also in return, give us some form of respite and say that um, because of what they bring to the table, we're gonna do, we're going to expedite action and make sure that they get all that's due them. Okay, so now we're saying that we've waited since June. The, the, um, the Honorable um, Speaker of the House of Rep did actually um, um, have a conciliatory meeting with us telling us to actually give time to the government to pay. This is September, three months down the line. And we actually not seen any speed whatsoever. It's it kind of like um, an S1 kind of movement. So we're saying that we've actually on our own part given time to government. We're expecting government on its own part to do its own bidding as soon as, as they can, so that we know where to move on um, onward up to. Hmm. And uh, was there any threat or suggestion that NYC doctors will be asked to replace your members? Uh, that is quite um, laughable and regrettable um, because um, various strata of medical practice has a um, different um, level of, uh, of, um, of expertise, as it were, very di different level of expertise. I mean, an intern has its own level of expertise that he can, he can do at that level. Also, um, the, um, the court doctor also has its own level. The court doctor cannot open up the brain because he's not a neurosurgeon. The court doctor can, um, cannot do an atroscopic procedure on the knee or on the shoulder because he's not um, a specialist in that area, okay? So um, that is quite laughable and uh, for a for a the sitting minister that was not at the party meeting where these issues were discussed, I actually uh, doubt that uh, um, the public should take any of those with any, with any seriousness attached to it. Um, that's quite laughable uh, and regrettable yeah. because every start structure of, of medicine has its own, um, its own laid down um, decisions um, that they have gathered clinically that they can actually exhibit um, at that level. There is an act that governs the residency training by law, so you cannot extinguish that um, without um, legislative backing. Okay, all these are procedural um, errors, you know, when it comes to, uh, 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 um, when it comes to leadership. So um, I, I appeal to the public to disregard in its entirety um, any form of uh, uh, um, speech, either written or verbal, that um, the specialist doctors, the resident doctors, are actually replaced by um, court doctors. That is not true. It's laughable and it's regrettable. Mm. Negotiations usually give and take. So what's uh, not giving or letting go as a party in the negotiation? Like we've always said, we've always buttressed this point. There are some form of level of committal that you get and you say, okay, we're given a time to say um, government has shown interest. Government has shown commitment to um, making sure that all these demands are met. But at this um, very point, we'll see at the level of we have done this, we have done that, and nothing has materialized as it were. So we're going to take that back to the National Executive Council and make them understand that this is where we are now. And they will be providing the way forward because we are just, um, we're just uh, um, leaders among equals, okay? That is what it is at this very moment. All right, so what would you be your final words uh, for the doctors who right now, uh, you know, are demanding, uh, you know, uh, they're saying they want insurance, they want all of these benefits. What would, you, what would you say to them to encourage them as they, you know, face this battle with the government for a, a few things that they, they're demanding for? Personally, I work in an infectious disease um, hospital where we, um, in Eero Specialist Teaching Hospital, where we mm -hmm. are the leaders um, on the treatment of Lassa fever and other infectious diseases. And I know how, uh, how often um, our members are exposed to these uh, infectious diseases, as it were. I encourage them that we should hold the fourth, um, that in no distant time we'll be singing Eureka and we'll, we'll get what is due us in terms of training, in terms of, uh, in terms of um, inducement allowances, in terms of um, group life insurances, for them to know that they are safe while they try to um, give their all 
to mankind and the country in Nigeria. We are praying and hoping that um, in no distant time, all this will be a matter of the past. Mm. Let's be hopeful and steadfast. Mm. So in summary, you're saying to the doctors, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Julian Uyabo, first uh, Vice President Nard, for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Nigerians. Thank you.